Hi, and welcome to Dr. Mix. Hi, and welcome to Dr. Mix. Hi, and welcome to Dr. Mix. <laughs> you know what? Let me dive straight into the drums. Follow me with my Cubase session. So for the drums, I've used uh, one of my favorite kits ever, which is Abbey Road 70s Drummer by Native Instruments. I like it because it's super tight, it's super well recorded, because you have overhead mix, room mix, and then you have mixer controls, you can really shape the sound however you want. In this case, I've muted the toms because I didn't need them. This is heavily customized, as I always do for any project. And it sounds like this, in this configuration. So the driving uh, beat of this track is probably mainly the hi-hats. They hit very hard in the mix. The snare is actually not too loud. The kick is super fat. I've worked it out this way. According to reports, this drums on the original record were looped. So basically they took a tape loop and they had maybe one or two bars that kept on going round and round. And it makes sense because the rhythm is so steady. And also if you listen to the mix, you will realize that the open hi-hats are recorded on top of it. And also those crushes are recorded on top of it. So it makes a lot of sense that it was recorded that way. What I did, I simply played it, I still played the open hi-hats manually and then I separated them and put it on a different track so that I could mix them separately. Otherwise, these are the instruments, that's the crush that I'm using, it's pretty straightforward. Eight notes fill, it doesn't vary from that, there are no drum fills, it's one thing from beginning to end like a house track. Here I have first recorded MIDI and then I have separated all the tracks. So here you got the kick drum. Man, this kick drum. This kick drum sounds good. Snare drum. Now the snare drum doesn't sound spectacular on its own, but this is exactly the type of sound I needed and I've made an effort to make it sound exactly like this at this level with this much top end. And here's the closed hi-hats. That was an open hi-hat right there. Let me uh, show you the open hi-hat only. See? I did that so that I could mix it correctly. And here you get the crushes and there's a little hi-hat break here, which is just an open hi-hat. I didn't have a place for it, so I gave it a different uh, track. And also there is a reverb hi-hat, which I think I detected in uh, the original mix. Right? So pretty much that does it for the drums. Let's just play them together, just as a reminder. The most important bit is that I really looked for the right balance for this to be driving forward. Most of my concentration in this case was in the general feel, the general mix of the drums. But it doesn't end there, does it? Because there is a shaker. Now, this shaker is obviously in the original track. The drums are pretty much straight. So they are as opposed to but in the arrangement, a lot of instruments are heavily swung, like the main guitar, like the horns, and some of the string movements every now and then. So there is this sort of duality between the rhythm section being very straight in terms of 16 notes and some of the elements being very heavily swung. I've chosen a way in between with the shaker. I, I swung it a little bit. I swung it a little bit. I swung it. I swung it. So yeah, there's a little bit of uh, swung shaker. It's not like chick 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 where the guitar that's heavily swung. The shaker goes almost straight, just a bit swung. So yeah, and there's the triangle now. 
The triangle is very low in the mix, and I kept it low in the mix. And I'm uh, gonna make it a bit louder now so that you can get it. This is like that famous uh, triangle pattern that I detected in the mix, uh, which is typical of any police chase movie from the 70s. That, that's the kind of uh, movement. This is definitely straight. With the rhythm section, I am keeping it a little bit fluid like that. Oh, and now we get to the cascara. Now, the cascara is very interesting because if you listen to the original mix, there is a uh, sort of afro pattern that goes one, two, three, four. Ticket, 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 one, ticket, 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 right? And that instrument is played to my ears on the sides of a timbale. I repeat that on the sides of a timbale. With uh, salsa music and with Latin music, you get the paila. Paila is two timbales, which is, you know, dong, ding, dong, you know the instruments, right? On this instrument also, there are a few cowbells. You can do that. But during the verses, what salsa players do is they alternate and they go and play this cascara rhythm on the side, which goes In this case, they didn't play that full pattern, but because that salsa instrument is still in, you kind of get that salsa feel, but they're playing more afro pattern, which is three, four, ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. You know what, let me just play it straight up for you. See, these are different hits of cascara. I just basically slice them from a cascara pattern. And that cascara pattern would go like this. All right, but in this case, it just goes three, four. I use different ones so they, they don't sound like always the same sample. And let me play to you in context. I'm gonna mute the bounced cascara. I'm just gonna play manually. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I had to play cascara on it, which you can do because uh, the clave is there. Okay, I'm going to leave a link in the description for my salsa explanation video. It's a rhythmic pattern that basically defines Latin music, Afro. Cuban music, all good funk, soul. It's this pattern. This beautiful track is no exception. It's this one. All right, maybe I am explaining a little bit too much, but listen, this is what's in my head. This is what's in my heart. I know the influence of Afro-Cuban music in funk, soul, disco, and therefore I use a little bit of time to explain it. If anything, it helps me to groove better with this music and it's kind of the way I, I read this and the way I interpret it in order to make it danceable. So, uh, woo, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? We have one more part of this puzzle, which is the timbales. Now, as I said, timbales are played like this, mostly, but then you get the those hits, right? This track is full of them. I pull them down from the original record, literally, so they sound like this. Yeah, put a ton of reverb in it. Let me see here. Maybe I put too much reverb in, but you know, whatever, too late. <laughs> so let me show you where I got 
those timbales from? Those timbales come from my Modi X. If you go to Cloud Drums, these are samples that I have created myself. So, uh, this is from one of my salsa albums. Let me see, okay? <laughs> see, this is my live set. And that's why I have all these sounds neatly organized so that they work for me. So, these are hits that I have played and recorded on my timbales. So I've got flames here. I can add a little bit of reverb here. Those uh, timbales come from my Modi X. Yeah, I guess this is about it. Is there anything else I wanted to say about the drums? Not for now. I think it's fine. I am going to go into the bass on the next episode. Thanks for watching and uh, I will see you later. Yeah, later. <laughs>